Hello, I'm Richard Raffin and in this video I'm going to show you how I use long nose doors to grip small detail on decorative bowls and uh, a box lid. The main thing to remember about these chucks is that they're manufactured as a, uh, as a cylinder first, uh, the jaws are all machined and that kind of thing, and then they're cut into four pieces. And this means that on the perfect diameter here they will grip a piece of wood without leaving a mark provided you have the uh, the tenon they're gripping the right size any larger and the four points are going to dig in any smaller and the bearing surface is up in the middle of the uh, of the curve here now I will just take a closer look at that uh, on a smaller chuck here we see the jaws clamped down on a diameter which is clearly larger than the machined diameter of the jaws and when we turn that over you can see that here these are dovetail jaws but there's very little shadow there so the teeth have actually dug in and when we have a look at that you'll see that oops, there's quite a mark there and another one in fact there'll be uh, eight of them, two from each jaw. Here we see the jaws cramped right down on a foot which is the right size. Difficult to tell what size it is here. I'll just have a look here and you can see that the dovetail sits right into the corner at the top of the foot and there's space underneath most of the dovetail. So this foot is not the same angle as the chuck and the reason for that uh, is so that I can just, if there's any bruising at all, it's right up in the corner and that will be extremely difficult to spot. Same with this teeny little dish. People are always a bit surprised that uh, the jaws will hang on to this, but you can really push and it's not going to give way. The wood will break, well the wood might break across the grain there, but um, it's, they do not come out that easily. You have to have a heck of a catch before they do. So that's with that one. Um, here is a straight foot. This again is right down, of, right on the limits of the chuck this time, and you can actually see space under the hole of the jaw, which means that the bearing surface is in the middle of the jaw, and uh, any kind of bruising which takes place is, even if you know what you're looking for, is very difficult to spot. So this is going to be changed, this foot anyway, so I can just mark the middle of the foot with a pencil mark and so there's the pencil mark and if there's any difference at all it's squeezed the dust out all into the wood I don't know what's happened but uh, I think you'd be hard pushed to know that this has come finished straight out of a chuck Knowing that I can grip a finished surface without marking the wood uh, means that I can use detail like this and this is actually a fixing point. So that will go into one of those beads, looks like the lower one. Yep. And so that's pretty well the perfect circle and you can see what's happening on the inside here and there's shadow underneath there so the, the the jaw just goes nicely into that little groove. What you have to watch in this situation is that uh, this is, isn't, uh, is curved a little bit to allow the jaw to get in uh, but you can grip a very very um, fine bead using that technique and again it's not going to come out easily 
you can really kind of swing it here apply some pressure what enables me to do this is the shape of the jaw this is a dovetail with a with just it's just been slightly rounded over so it's safe so it's not sharp whereas so many jaws have a little chamfer on the inside um, and I don't have any because I don't think they're worth buying um, or even worse they've got one like this jaw um, which has a little kind of square section on the inside and the problem with that is that it won't fit into a corner so if we look at this it can't fit into a corner um, or if it fits into the corner and you tighten the jaws it's going to leave a little trench so in this situation it oh, won't even go that far uh, but if I had a small bead you can see that it's it's not going to fit into a V groove so when you're looking for chuck jaws go for something with a nice crisp dovetail um, you don't really need all these little I don't know what they're supposed to be really ridges I, I never feel they do much in the way of gripping because the real grip comes from when these teeth dig in uh, to a tenon which we saw in the um, with the first bowl so I hope I've convinced you that you can grip on very small details using these jaws here's a little box elder burl and in this case I can grip on the bead which is squarish or I can even tighten it a little bit more and oops, come in come in there right so that's absolutely on the limits of the chuck um, but there's still a little bit of uh, shadow just in under there one of the great things really about the long jaws is that you can grip other little details like on this box lid for instance um, I've already expanded the jaws inside this ring so I can hold it to do the outside but in case I want to get back on the inside I've done this decoration and that allows that to go into the chuck where are we into the chuck lock that so you can see it's gripping on very little indeed and it still it won't come out easily so when you're buying your chucks I would go for the longer jaws rather than the standard jaws because you can do so much more with them and just in case you're wondering I did remove the jaw so you could see what's happening it's not something you should do as a normal practice.